Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about prayer a little bit. Paul in his epistle to the Romans says, In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words, or with sighs that cannot be uttered, or inexpressible sighs. It's the most beautiful verse. Many of, the, many of the translations, probably most of them, say groanings. But I like the word sigh because the Holy Spirit breathes with us. You can sometimes feel the Holy Spirit breathing within, and the Holy Spirit sighs with inexpressible words. It's just beautiful. So, what does Paul mean by the Spirit? Well, another place in Paul, in his epistle to the Ephesians, says, Pray in the, in the Spirit at all times. With every kind of prayer and petition, to this end, stay alert with all perseverance in your prayers for all the saints. Pray in the Spirit at all times. Or another translation is to pray unceasingly. But pray in the Spirit. What does that mean? Well, over the past few weeks, the past few lectures that I've put on YouTube and radio programs, I talk about two ways of doing things. Two opposite ways of, of doing things. One with awareness and one without awareness. And I said that you can do any any anything you can you can think of picking up a piece of paper with awareness or without awareness and i i've given a couple of examples for example how many times have you been a little bit upset about something lost in thought same thing upset or lost in thought which came first, the chicken or the egg? And you put your key somewhere and then you can't find it. Or you put something somewhere and you can't find it. Why? Because when you were lost in thought and a little bit upset about something, you, you, you did it unconsciously. You were moving unconsciously and unaware. Do you understand? So... We should do everything with awareness. Awareness means that you are not in a hypnotic trance. It means you're not upset. You're not emotional. You're not lost in thought. You're not lost in daydreams. You're not lost in worries and doubts and fears. It means that you're aware. See, in the Bible it often says, watch. Doesn't Christ say often, and Paul too, watch. Christ said, watch, because you know not the day or the hour. So, watch. Now, I'll give you another example of awareness. I said, and this is one I gave on a recent radio program, I said, when you arrive at a stop sign, you stop. I said, there are two entirely different reasons for stopping. One reason for stopping is so that you won't get a ticket. Another reason for stopping is so that, because you can see that it's wise. You can see that it's the right thing to do. Do you see the difference between those two? We must do everything with awareness. Christ told us at the Last Supper to, to eat. He said, do this in remembrance of me to eat or to drink in remembrance of him. So that would be with awareness. And if you can eat with awareness, that's one of the hardest things to do because as soon as we start e eating, we lose awareness. But if you can eat with awareness, do you, do you see? 
But now do you understand why you, when you talk to your partner, to your child, when you have those delicate moments with your loved ones, you must speak with awareness. Because if you don't speak with awareness, if you're not aware, then it means you're upset, you're angry, you're emotional, you're lost in thought, you're making something too important, like being right, or you're resentful, or you're looking to the wrong place for answers. You're looking down into your mind, into your intellect, for something clever to say, for something that will shut them up or get rid of them or impress them or scare them or tease them or challenge them. Do you understand? Everything you must do with awareness. That's why the meditation is important. You start today with the intention of being aware and you practice a little meditation to get you started. When I say meditation, I mean my meditation. See, most meditations what they do is they do the opposite. They get you unaware. They get you into thinking, into imagining, into fantasy, into, into floating away with feelings and seeking feelings. See? Seeking to feel good, seeking to feel calm, seeking to and imagining a beautiful lake with swans on it. You see what I mean? It's just, it's taking you in the wrong direction. So now do you understand what play, praying in the spirit means? It means praying with awareness. But see, it goes beyond that. I've been giving examples of, of simple awareness. See, so there are stages. There are levels. And you arrive, you climb in consciousness. You've heard of a higher consciousness? Well, now you know what it means. The higher your conscious, the more aware you are, the higher your consciousness. The closer you are to the light, to God's light of truth. The closer you are to light, you become more aware. And when you are close, very close, then you're very close to the kingdom of God. And then not only do you do things with awareness, but because your will is to do his will, you are committed to doing what's right. And you yearn for truth. And you're willing to express the truth. And you, and you want the truth even if it shows you to be wrong. Then, then you are close to being in God. Remember, in John, the Gospel of John, Christ prayed that, Christ said that, you know, you have given me these and I have kept them. Now I pray that, that they be in me as I am in you and you are in me and I am in them. Do you, you see, understand? If you're in Christ, then he sends the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit prays for you. Because you don't even know what to pray for. Doesn't that, isn't that what it says? So, when you do things angrily, egotistically, where you have some goal, when you're trying to prove something, when you're trying to make something happen, when you have the wrong energy, when you're lost in thinking, you become easily influenced by other people and by situations and things that happen and what you hear and it all gets inside. Do you understand how instead of, instead of Christ inside and God inside, when you are unaware, the outside gets on the inside. The, hip, the hypnotist's will, what other people say, the peer group, their wills, their thoughts, see, their goals, their tea, it all gets inside. Now do you understand? So, when you are in Christ, then the Holy Spirit prays for you. So now perhaps you can see that, that uh, 
that a wordy prayer. See, for, for a long time, we're just egos. Maybe we hear about Jesus and we hear about God and we kind of like what we hear. We like it. But we're not yet. It's not our time yet. We're not ready. That's okay. So you're a kid. So you just be a kid. You're a young adult. You just be a young adult. And then you make some mistakes and you get upset and you get angry at people and you want to prove something. And okay, so we've all done that. And you've hated some people and resented them, and that's not good. Okay, but you did. Maybe you didn't know. You didn't really know. Well, you sort of knew better, didn't you? In your heart, you knew. But you weren't ready yet to be committed, and you became too emotional. The emotions carried you away. All right, and then outside forces operated through you. See, from down there, remember? I said when you're upset, when you're angry, when you're lost in thoughts, then something from down there. Remember I said it gets in? then it influences you. And as I said on a previous video, video lecture, a short one, I said that the voice that comes from down there might very well be the guy with the horns. The guy with the horns. He talks to you down there. And he says what you want to hear. Nobody appreciates you. They're taking advantage of you. They're, you're not getting what you deserve. You deserve better than this. You should show them, prove to them. You'll get even with them. You'll rise to the top and then you'll throw it in their face. You know, that kind of stuff. There's just so many different variations of it, but it's the guy with the horns. Now, he doesn't really have horns, but it's a cute way of saying it. You know, this faceless phantom, this interloper, this identity, this other, this intelligence and will. It operates through, through people who are unaware. And who are, so now do you see how awareness becomes so important? So you were unaware. Why? Because you were upset and people teased you and you became angry. And so you were unaware. Then you didn't even know what was operating through you, but you saw the result. You saw the ruined relationships. You saw your kids suffering. You, you saw things going wrong in your life. So you knew something was wrong. But then at a certain point, you start to become ready when it's your time. And you begin to yearn for something, something good, something pure, something innocent. You yearn for truth. You yearn for the father you've never known. And you're willing, willing to see your own wrong. For the first time, you never wanted to admit your wrong. Now you're willing to admit. And then God sends light. He, like I've always, like I've said, he turns up the dimmer switch and the light gets brighter and now you see more clearly. And now you're ready to begin on the path to God. Now you were always on the path to God from the time you were a little tiny child. You were, but you were sidetracked. Now you're back on the path again. Now you, there's much to see, much to undo. It takes time. God will give you time. So just so take it easy. Let your hair down. Don't try to make anything happen. Rome wasn't built in a day. Now God is in charge. Now he's in charge. And, uh, and so now... You are drawn to the meditation, the proper meditation, and you begin to practice it. And now you're ready to start to become committed to God. And now you, your yearning is always to, to do what's right, to know the truth. You don't want to be hateful, resentful anymore toward people. And now the truth is there. And so your prayers are, are more like a proper yearning, a yearning, a wanting to do what's right, but you don't even know what, what right is. And the Holy Spirit prays for you because he knows what you need. He knows what's good for you. So words aren't even necessary. Because you remember words. That's why some people are afraid. So now what I'm trying, here's the point I was trying to make. 
before when you were angry and upset. You were just an ego, and so you prayed as an ego. There was always a little bit of selfishness in it. It's okay. It's all right. But now you're, you're kind of beyond that. Now when you pray, um, it, you don't have to use any words. You, just, you have the right intent. You always have the right intent. That's the same thing as praying. And then the Holy Spirit prays for you. And then good things happen. Bad things serve for good because you can learn something from bad things that happen. You learn a lesson. And uh, maybe you this time you, you re respond properly to the bad thing without anger, without resentment. You grow in character. Then but lots of good things happen. Out of nowhere, good comes into your life and you're, you're amazed. A bounty of good. And you didn't try to make it happen. And it just happened. It's beautiful. So, that's what Paul means to pray in spirit.